Hey, welcome to the 180th episode of Just Shoot It, a podcast about filmmaking, screenwriting, and directing. I'm Matt Unlo. And I'm Warren Kaplan. Today on the podcast, we have Audrey Moore. She's an awesome actress that's been on some of my favorite shows, including Godless, The OA, Better Call Saul. But more interestingly to us, she's also a podcast host. We love podcasting. Well, her podcast is like kind of the acting version of our podcast. Yeah, certainly. It's called Audrey Helps Actors. It's aimed at actors who need help with the business side and the business architecture of being a working actor. She's got a really analytical mind and a really disciplined mindset. And she's trying to help people learn the things that she's already learned and basically systematize being an actor. Because basically the bottom line is like kind of like with a filmmaker some people get lucky and those are the stories you hear but for the people who don't just kind of like catch lightning in a bottle there has to be a plan and a way to actively build your career and she's so methodical about the way that she approaches acting it's really fascinating and so she's a strong advocate for actors she's really curious and wants to learn more about what we as filmmakers have to help actors it's a really insightful passionate conversation about being an artist and being a professional. Just like our podcast, she is trying to target that very wide margin of actors between the new struggling actors and the ones that are winning Oscars. There's all the rest of us, and that's kind of how we are. It's like, you know, the people we talk to, they didn't haven't necessarily won an Oscar yet, but they're also not fresh off the car to L.A. and trying to figure it out. So the other thing that, again, parallels our show is it seems like she feels that a lot of actors are already preloaded with all the art. They've done Shakespeare. They're done, they've done Arthur Miller. They've done acting for Cameron. But they haven't spent nearly that same amount of time working on the business side of things. Yeah. And that's what she tries to impart to people. And it's not really just for new actors because, as we all know, the business side of things changes like every day. Like She just had this casting director on, and the casting director is talking about how different things are today than they were even like two or three years ago and so it's a great resource for actors and even filmmakers and people that are casting other people to keep up with what is going on with casting and acting and all that stuff today yeah i I find that listening to people who are driven and analytical in slightly different fields is always really inspiring to me if you're filmmaking adjacent the parallels are so obvious that if you're paying attention you're just kind of soaking up all of these great ideas and great parallel techniques, basically, that you can incorporate into your filmmaking career. And so to me, Audrey's show is a really great resource, not just for actors, but also for filmmakers as well, who want to up their game. So in the interview, we go really deep into how actors think about acting and how they maybe should think about acting. And we also kind of do a deep dive into like the confidence it takes to tell people that you are what you are, whether you are telling people that you're a director, whether you're telling people you're a writer, or an actor, there's something about that switch and that dedication and that commitment that leads to confidence that makes people want to work with you. Yeah, the parallels are so overt and obvious that I think we, all three of us, had a really special, fun conversation digging in on understanding the other side of the camera a little bit better. This also is the first episode of our actor intensive. Ooh, I like the, yeah, the intensive. That's great. Yeah, we're doing a, a mini series basically. We had such a great time with our development mini series that we thought this is a great way to focus on a different aspect of directing in a more concise way. So, we'll have multiple episodes of sort of entrepreneurial actors over the next few weeks to kind of dig in on the craft of acting because it's not a thing that we really get to talk about too much on the show. I'm really excited about our lineup. It's all actors that have been in many things that you've definitely heard of or seen and They all talk about their interaction with our side of the camera. And a lot of them are working on, you know, behind the camera nowadays. Um, Well, before we uh, hop into our conversation with Audrey, we do have a little bit of housekeeping. Our Patreon hats are back in stock. Uh, It continues to grow. If you want to throw a couple bucks our way to help grow the show, help support things, help give us a little bit of latitude to experiment, maybe do some bonus episodes, our live shows, all of the stuff that kind of over the last year or two we've been able to expand and and you know improve the show basically and i think in pretty significant ways and therefore grow the community of, of just shoot at listeners who can kind of all uh communicate with one another go to patreon.com slash just shoot it <laughs> yeah or patreon.com maybe you'll find another cool show you want to patronize yeah, no, well. no, don't start searching start, start with ours but also listen you know 
a buck for us, a buck for somebody else. Sounds great to me. Yeah, so the way the hat thing works is if you uh, become a $10 a month patron, you will get a free Just Shoot It hat. And if you want to change your pledge from $10 to $1 the next month, which I've noticed quite a few people have done <laughs> yeah. as soon as they receive their hats, uh, well, that is totally cool. Um, with us, we are just excited that people are involved in supporting the show. But you got to send me a selfie. Oh, with wearing the hat. I got to see it. Or yeah. the sticker. We've been sending the stickers to people, too. Uh, we need more selfies. Come on, guys. Yeah. Uh, and we pretty much use the money to lose less on our live shows and on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. pay our editor. And uh, yeah. So we'll check let it out. you know when we break even. Yeah. Maybe in a cares. year or two. We'll see. Yeah. Patreon.com slash just shoot a pod. Thank you. Before we get into the show, we've got Zach Lepofsky. He's the creator of Shotlister, uh, and he's also a filmmaker. He's here to talk to us a little bit more about the Shotlister app. So, Zach, you are the creator. You're the man behind this incredible app, and you're a filmmaker, so you must have a specific story. You must have a time when you were like, thank God I invented this app. How did it save the day for you? <laughs> well, it's very that's very true. I actually uh, built the app because I made my very first movie, which was actually an MOW for the Sci-Fi Channel called Tasmanian Devils, about giant oh. men-eating Tasmanian devils. An MOW, for those that don't know, movie of the week. Starring Winnie Cooper from The Wonder Years, Killing Tasmanian Devils. We went to college together. It's the best Tasmanian Devil movie ever made. But anyway... Every day on that shoot, it was just one of those shoots where everything went wrong every day, and uh, which I'm very grateful for because no shoot has ever been as bad as that. So, Because you invented Shotlister thereafter. Well, that's very true. I invented it so that I could basically manage all my shots and change the plan because every day the plan would change. And there was this one day where we were supposed to shoot all the stuff with the helicopter because uh, they fly into Tasmania on this helicopter because they're daredevils there to see Tasmanian devils. Get it? Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> that's uh, pretty good man that's pretty but good but they you know on the helicopter day the helicopter didn't show up uh, was it gonna fly in or were you no it was being it was like it was gonna be on a truck because it wasn't actually a real helicopter like all the guts were taken out of it so you could like you know put it on cranes and like swing mm-hmm. it around and stuff which was our plan until it didn't show up so then quickly you know the crew standing around and i basically moved all the shots around i was using a prototype of shot at the time that i had built and uh, rebuilt a whole schedule from scratch on the day. And, uh, you know, we made our day. We, we went and shot a bunch of inserts that we needed and a bunch of other stuff. And actually by, like, lunchtime, the helicopter did show up. So then we had to cram. Oh, were you pulling shots, like, from the next day into today? Can you do that in shot? Yeah, exactly. If anyone's used, like, movie magic scheduling for, like, creating a one-liner, it's very similar, but it's for shots instead of scenes. Is there a martini emoji? <laughs> on the, the last shot of the day that's the question it can actually use any emoji in the keyboard so go to town and how is winnie cooper was she just like showing off her math skills the whole time <laughs> uh well she does save the day with her incredible skills she takes all the parts of their crash jeep and builds a flamethrower out of jeep parts oh, i've done that and then uses the flamethrower to you know roast tasmanian devils and the special <laughs> effects team actually built the flamethrower out of only jeep parts what with a real flame well, you know, they put a, they hit a propane tank in the gasoline tank, but it, every sure. every part you could see was from the Jeep. So wow. she's pretty badass in it. But uh, yeah, check out that movie and check out Shalister. Let's say, you know, $14 for an app. That's like, I need to really like an app to invest that much. Like, is there any way I could preview it for free? Yeah, could you uh, hook us up? <laughs> well, I'll do you even better than a preview. How about I just give you a free copy and give a copy to anyone who's listening? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> can't be that can't be true right how could this guy make any money wait but how are you serious how would you get a free how would you give a free copy away basically what we're gonna do is anyone who emails just shoot it pod at shotlister.com uh we're gonna give away 50 copies every month so even if you're listening to this you know 30 years from now email just shoot it pod at shotlister.com and we'll give you a, a free copy as long as we haven't given away 50 that month but then just email us the next month yeah 30 years from now people are gonna be like wait the biggest podcast of all time has an email address at Shotlister. What do they have to write in the email? Uh, just let us know what platform you want, either you know Mac OS, iOS, Android, or whatever platform exists 30 years from now. We'll also have that on your holographic display Shotlister. We'll we'll give you a copy of that as well. Um, well, awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us, Zach. And if you have tried out Shotlister, send us a picture of yourself using it. Put it on Instagram. 
tag us at Just Shoot It Pod, tag Shot Listener at Shot Listener, and let us know what you think of it. And here is Audrey Moore. All right. Audrey. Hi. How do you pronounce your last name? It's Helps Actors? Audrey yeah. Helps Actors is my last name. Yeah, you gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Uh-huh. I always yeah. thought okay. Helps okay. was your middle name. Yeah, Helps <laughs> is my middle name. Actors is, is that my, Swedish? Right. It is Swedish, yeah. 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 A, a Swedish and a German, I think. Helps Actors. Yeah, yeah. How was yeah. your midsummer? Uh, <laughs> s- you know, I, I didn't. What what happens in midsummer? Do they all die? Is that what happens? Yeah. I survived. Yeah, yeah. I survived. <laughs> you made it through. Right? Boy. You guys don't. Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, right. yeah. Oren hasn't Out seen it. Out the gate. <laughs> Come on. You can look at the preview and know that. Yeah, yeah. That's what Matt dies. keeps telling me about every movie. He's like, well, you saw the trailer, right? I'm like, <laughs> right. no, I didn't. See the, you did it? This is you not a slide. all the day? No, I did. Uh, but I, I, anyway. You guys. Well, spoiler. That, that was going to be my my um, unpaid, unpaid endorsement. endorsement. Yeah, I really loved oh, Midsommar. Oh, did you like it? I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't stopped thinking about it. Did you see it yet, Jesse? Uh, so every so listeners know, well, I'll be constantly referring to my husband, who's the producer of uh, the podcast that I do, Audrey Helps Actors, uh, but he likes to sit in the corner and not participate. Uh, he nods his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Encouragement, though, right? Oh, That's totally good. encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to your last episode, and I heard you, like, high-five someone, and I was like, is she just, like, clapping her <laughs> hand? <laughs> or is there someone with her? Because it was yes. during your intro. Oh, Right. Yeah, that was probably you, right? Yeah, that was him. Oh, See, he's good. nods silently. Yeah, yeah. That's what he does. Okay. We yeah. have a friend who does a podcast called Respect the Process, and mm. he like must have paid uh, like a voiceover actor years mm. ago mm. to like do like the intro. Yeah. But he always does bits as though she's in the room. <laughs> it's like, Helen, what do you think? Should we mention my new course is coming out? Nah, we don't want to plug my course. Yeah. I've done that too much. Uh, it, I he love does that. It every episode, and it's always charming. It's really good. I, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. a lot of self awareness. Her name's Helen. It? Yeah, yeah. What's up, Helen? Every, my favorite bit is when he'll be like, "Well, Helen, what do you think of that?" That, and she'll she'll go, uh, "You know, respect the process," or just like a clear <laughs> like soundbite that doesn't make any sense yeah. at all. It's so good. I love but he'll that. also yeah. he'll like make changes on his show, and he'll be like, "Oh, Helen, Helen is telling me that the music the intro music is just getting boring, so we're trying something <laughs> new." Yeah. I Very love good. this. It's like um, oh, Mr. What is his name on Tim the Toolman Taylor? He's got the guy that you never see. Oh, oh sure. His, yeah, the neighbor. Yeah. Mr. Wilson? Can't be Mr. Sounds, Wilson, isn't it? Sounds right. I think it's Wilson. It's not Mr. Wilson. It I think it's Wilson, just Wilson. But right? I never made the connection. Yeah, Mr. Wilson. That, that must have been I'm sure. intentional. I know. Yeah. How many things do you watch now that you realize were You're clearly like, brilliantly oh. intentional, but you were too young to understand the brilliance of it? Hmm. Almost none. Really? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, guys yeah. don't watch enough cartoons. <laughs> that's what I have to say. Or Oren's just very smart. Yeah, well, he's too smart for it. Yeah, that's right. I don't get references. Uh, so, so Audrey, uh, so you're an actress. I am. Oh, actually, that was my first question. Okay. So I, I heard you on your podcast refer to actresses as actresses. Yes. What's your take on it? I don't think it matters. Okay. That's <laughs> what I think, but I feel like a jerk every time I say the word actress. It's just like by instinct I say it, but then people are like, well, you don't say doctress. You say no. doctor. Yeah, but, you could just say actor either way. Yeah, I th- yeah. I feel like I, you know, if I'm just talking to the ladies, I would probably be like, you know, a lot of you actresses out there, mm-hmm. instead of being like, a lot of you actors who have vaginas, just know sure. this is something maybe you'll come across, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Right? Fair enough. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, a, you're saying it's a more specific Yeah, word. it's, it, well, I do think that there are obviously um, certain issues just like anything that affect uh, different people in different ways. You know, uh, actors who've been at it for 40 years have uh, certain um, th- obstacles that they're getting around that's different than, you know, somebody who's 20, right? And just like that's somebody, uh, I think that actresses have certain things that they maybe are up against mm-hmm. in a way that's different than actors and not in a better or worse way necessarily, just in a sure. way worth addressing sometimes. Yeah, fair mm-hmm. enough. Okay, cool. Well, there we go. Well, that's done. Podcast. Done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Perfect. we're wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Great work. Uh, you know, uh, so we'll do like a little intro, mm-hmm. you know, after the episode wraps and all sure. this stuff, just kind of setting things up. But just for our own, because I don't know your origin story, oh, right? Great. You're a working actor, right? Yes. Uh huh. And you have a podcast. I do. Where you help actors. That's right. Um, give us the genesis of that. Let's kind of start from the beginning a little bit. Yeah. So I have a podcast wherein I help actors, says Audrey. And uh, it started as a real desire to A, 
fill an actor's time and uh, you both uh, live and love actresses so you know how that can go uh it can be lots of bangs and lots of lulls and busts Mm -hmm. and it's important i find to have something to do in your lulls of your career that can keep you from becoming a crazy person to your agent Mm -hmm. so it was partly born out of that for my own selfish interest um It was also born out of a real feeling like when it comes to the business side of acting, when it comes to the practical, how do you get Mm -hmm. seen? How do you build a career that makes money, makes money and consistently makes money that, you know, people can then take, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's teaching that in any of your university levels in any of your anything really. Sure. And there's not even like a Leslie Kahn there like business of acting. Class. It's starting to happen where I actually think it's because a lot of people from the podcast are very fervent, as you can imagine, actors. It's a fervent group. Sure, sure. And they are all in these acting classes and they're telling, I think, their teachers how what's so great about it is, you know, it's a podcast that really addresses like some practical tools and knowledge about working mm-hmm. as, in this industry as an actor. Because the the lot that we're sold, and I know you've talked about this with, um, with writing and directing and filmmaking, is you go to these schools and they basically sell you that like you're going to be the next... Yeah, you're a genius. Lead, right? yeah, yeah, the next yeah. legend, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's I how, haven't figured out that I'm not yet. <laughs> right, but, me neither, it's cool. Yeah, I'm that's le- why we have podcasts. Always in the making. Legend yeah, sure. always in the making, <laughs> yeah. right? And... Th- the people who are teaching you that are teaching you that acting is really like the talent is it Mm -hmm. that it's like acting and proficiency as an actor is really what matters and i could tell through my own personal journey and through the journey of those that i loved that that wasn't the full story it isn't that it doesn't matter it absolutely does but there's a reason why certain people work and work consistently. And if you're an actor who isn't, there's something to be solved there. And simply giving some perspective, some insight, having other guests on, other actors who are working and uh, providing a little insight of just exactly what you guys are doing for this, of like, what is the practical reality of how Mm -hmm. I get funding for a film what's the practical reality of like what is a one pager like what does that look like right and so for me it's like how does a casting director know you Mm -hmm. how do they know you over time how do they why would they call you in uh how do you get an agent how do you get a better agent and also like dispelling this real this myth that really leaves us all really angry really heartbroken uh a lot of shame, a lot of internal shame and frustration because we're sold that we're magic. Mm-hmm. And then we do what we know to do, which is to just be the best actors in the room that we know how to be. And then that seems like that's not enough. I always think of it as like, you're the most magical person in your hometown and everybody knows it. Yeah. And then all those magical people are sent to LA. Yes. And then you always hear these stories uh, so my dad lives in Israel and mm. um, there's I, I've been there many times. And there's all these celebrities there that have like they're like the most famous person in Israel. Yeah. And they come here and they cannot sure. break through or yeah. any other market. We have those yeah. friends. We have yeah, friends yeah. who are famous in their other countries, too. And like nobody and you, cares. Yeah, because you're up against the best people in the world here. Yeah. And, not, and in filmmaking and directing and writing. And yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it, you know, they always say like when you in any other major in college when mm-hmm. you graduate you like apply for a job you know mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. in in the entertainment industry there's no sure. place to apply for a job it 100%. took me years i didn't know i didn't really realize that honestly like i applied uh, yes. for jobs I, yeah. I graduated and was like okay well i'm gonna go get a job and worked at like at corporations monster.com yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I literally Cause, signed yeah. up for monster.com because yeah. yeah. that works yeah exactly yeah um yeah and it wasn't until years later that i was like oh a director doesn't have a full-time job often yeah i mean that's something that you know uh 
Jesse, my husband, uh, who produces the podcast and I talk about frequently is the difference between what you guys do as filmmakers versus actors is like, we actually get auditions. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of filmmakers really crave is like, if I could just come, if I could just go to bat, like I, I'm amazing at problem solving. Like, let me go to bat. I'll fucking... You know, right. if I can't knock it out now, I'm going to figure out how to right, knock it out. Because right. that's one thing that writers and directors are great at is like solving problems, right? That's the gift of commercials, actually. It is. Is that like you get sent boards and you're like, oh, do I respond to this? Mm. I can find a way to fall in love with it. Yes. That's right. so true. And, and the gift of just like, hey, this is the thing you're going to focus on for a couple of days. Mm. But mm-hmm. it's the same exact barrier. you like, how do I? So how do I get an audition for like an HBO miniseries? Yes. It's not right out of college. You get that. No. Unless... Unless something happens. But your parents what I, are friends with some producer or something. But honestly, the truth is, and this is what I say about on the podcast, which I do think is what makes acting uh, so different than all the other art forms, is I say that the real hard pill to swallow is that it really can just be magical luck. Yeah, and really sure. can be. I believe a career sustained over a length of time isn't just pure magical luck, but you can have the right casting for the right trend at the right moment with the right training with the right opportunities and bam out of nowhere you hit some gold yeah right and and those are the people that we all grew up admiring not only just grew up those are the people that we still fixate because now that what the further in you go the more you understand what the machine of publicity Mm -hmm. and what we're really doing here is selling this american dream uh, which I, I know sounds really jaded and I don't mean it to be, but it's, you know, the stories that, that, that actors are hearing of, you know, this luck of these pops. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, those are the stories because we're all perpetuating this idea of, you know, what I call the Harry Potter syndrome, that you just are inherently magical and mm-hmm. nobody told you. And of course we want to feel that way. Sure. Like who doesn't want to feel like we're the chosen one? And like someone's just going to come up to us and be like, there you are. And I always say to actors, I say, I want you to be the chosen one. I really do. I want you to be at the Beverly Center. Mm-hmm. I want you to be at Union Station, Union Square, Station 2, be on the train, sure. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And I want somebody to just think like, wow, you are right for this role and pluck you out and be like, are you an actor? And you're like, why, yes, I am. And then magic ensues right. and you're you go. Really famous. But on the off chance that that doesn't happen, sure. I think that it's important that actors know that there is just like any business real business structure that's happening here Mm -hmm. and there is a way to over time take hold of a market and your place in it Mm -hmm. that's really fascinating yeah Yeah. but also it's not an off chance that that doesn't happen it's like the on chance and i think there's like we have this obsession with youth and like overnight Mm -hmm. wonders like the Ryan Coogler's or the Diablo Cody's or whatever that like just out of nowhere they like made a huge hit yeah but I read this statistic yesterday that I'm like 90% sure is fake. Yes. Um, but it said that that the average age of like a founder of like a super successful, like a mega successful tech startup mm. was is 45. Yes. Even though the person we picture is like the Mark sure. Zuckerberg. Yeah, it's 20. Well, the average age, uh, I think that um, Jesse had done the research on this. Uh, the average age of selling your first script is 37. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's like 37. And that to be a staff writer is the um, is the number equivalent of making it into the NBA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. But like, why are they telling you that? <laughs> sure. Like, oh, hey, you want to be in... See, he's adjusting my sound. We warned him. <laughs> they warned him. Like, if you want to... Oh, you want to be a staff writer? Awesome. So you're trying to be in the NBA. Sure. Yeah, I but, think it would just be good. Yeah, Listen, but we want... I mean... that. There's a lot of people in the NBA. Like, if, sure, if you spent but, your whole life working towards being in the NBA, sure, then you're that's your goal. And if you're spending also, your whole life trying to write film or TV, then yeah, if you're but, 25 and you're trying to be in the in the NBA, NBA that's you're in real story. trouble. Yes. If you're 36 and you're trying to be in the NBA, sure, you know that's a you, you see what I I'm saying. What you're saying the, but, there's like but relationships and all that stuff. Is an understanding I'm about you subtract the physical no, sure, <laughs> requirements, right. right? No, but but that's important, is what I'm saying, right? Right. I'm saying like you have 
a runway X amount of time to, to make like, it into the NBA and right. you have more time to make it as a writer. Yeah, you basically I have to be like a true, teenager. But right? the 25-year-old writer that I don't want to quit writing doesn't get that. Sure. The 25-year-old writer that I want to keep going because he's really, his, his stories are valuable. Like he doesn't understand that it's just going to take more time because he's been sold sure. that like he's magical instead that of like the magic. Yeah. Th- instead of like there's, it's you're trying to get into the NBA and that's there's that's really hard. Sure. Yeah. I guess it, it's interesting to think about the idea of being a staff writer mm-hmm. as like I I feel like if you go to film schools now and you're yes. like hey like who wants to do be what or whatever be a staff writer be yeah. a staff like no one's Nobody. like hey I want to be a baby writer <laughs> right. on something right so right. like it in a weird way it feels like settling I think or or that first but, real reality check of like oh this is actually there's a tier to this I'm not yes. just gonna sell my own TV show right out of the gate yes but that's to me so important for somebody to be telling everybody sure is, yeah. is that it's not that you know those those five to 10 years, which I think are really important creative years that, you know, between the decision to, you know, and I don't want to just talk to the, to the people out there who are like graduating from college and then are wherever they are at in this thing, because there are a lot of people that I call like second generation artists, right? Like they had their first career in engineering and then they have their second career in whatever, right? Podcasting. Podcasting, right? That's a great, great uh, <laughs> successful sure. yeah. Yeah. financial world. Of, I have a uh, six-year runway on yeah, my engineering Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. But, you know, I those to those people too, and I actually find that the second-generation artists, their second-act artists is what I call them, actually come at it in such a wonderful way because they've already understood business and something else. Mm-hmm. They understood like business marketplace like the value of just like putting in your work over yeah. time learning the lessons you know adjusting what you right. need to but they've never faced rejection in the way that we well do. that's true but i find that they understand that like it's not going to be easy in the beginning because they've already had a career where it wasn't easy in the beginning mm-hmm. even though it was easier the understanding of like well it takes time to build a career is right. something that like they've internalized authentically already. they understand yeah they're I, also usually not 22 two, which sure. makes it easier yeah, yeah. To, you know i think of the grad students uh in my like oh, God. when i would be like around them as an undergrad mm-hmm. and there were always a few people like that are your your um your second generation second act, yeah. second act thank you uh-huh. second act artists mm-hmm. and as like a shithead teenager being like well, who are these weirdos who are really yeah. taking it seriously? Yeah, right. It's like, oh, they just spent $45,000 And they year. understand what that means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And That's... They're, they're leaving their families to be here with us. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they exactly. understand the cost of not only going to school, but the cost of not being in a profession in right. the years that you're in school. Right. Like that blew my mind. I was like, oh, it's not just expensive to go to college, but it's expensive because you're not in the working industry making money and learning actual experience and relationships. So that's fascinating. But- for me, I feel that talking to artists and letting them know the game that they're actually playing is really valuable mm-hmm. because I think, you know, they're smart, they're creative, they love to find problems, they love to just shoot it on a weekend, you know, like sure. whatever it takes, right? And it's a hungry group of people. It's a, right? it's a, f- a famished group of yeah. people. Yeah, and they right? can't afford food. Yeah, they're so hungry. <laughs> they're um, starving. Yeah, I guess the one thing I just... Think, thinking out loud, like the people that have kind of been in a corporate world or mm. ha- have had kind of regular careers before this might have more of an understanding that they need to create value in whatever work they mm-hmm. do. And I think a lot of young people come here and they're like, why aren't you giving me a chance? Like, yes. why aren't you trusting? Why aren't you calling me in? Why aren't you giving me a right. call back? Why aren't you? And it's like they're they're thinking of everything from the perspective of like, why aren't you doing something for, for me? me? And it, there's this transition of like you thinking like, well, what am I contributing to this yes project right. you know yes. um which is like a different mindset and it it's a, a business different mindset. strategy yeah yeah i would say like that's to me a business mindset of like what value am i adding and like when actors come to me and they talk about agents and they you know nobody understands agents i don't sure. know how it is in the writer's world but in the actor world we're all like we don't know what's happening back there right but there does seem to be real truth to like when people sign with certain agents, magically, mm-hmm. they suddenly get opportunities. They're not better or worse actors than they were yesterday when they didn't have that agent, but now suddenly they get those opportunities. Sure. And so wanting to like skip the line and get with those agents, and I'm sort of like, okay, but what do you offer 
so mm-hmm. they can make money off of you. Right. And I find nobody's told actors like, you don't understand, they're paying their rent on you. Who is like, well, you know Well, they're what? really paying their rent on packaging fees. True, that's true. Well, now they <laughs> are. That's it. Hi, uh, but also even that, packaging uh, fees. Sure. Like, I'm getting inundated with emails and I have friends who are on series. I have friends who book guest star after recurring guest star after guest star and they can't get a fucking meeting. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I like suddenly got- At an got, agent? At an agency. See? They can't get a fucking meeting, Sure, right? And- and there are people that like, because there's always these excuses of like, well, they're only doing diverse. Well, a lot of these mm-hmm. people are diverse, sure, right? Sure. Or they're all, you know, uh, straight white men are out. Well, these are diverse women, a lot of them. Right. Can't get a fucking meeting. And I started being really horrified by that and scared. And then when I was able to sit down and talk to my contacts and as you do and and get the scoop and find out about packaging mm-hmm. and uh the number that i was told is 85 percent of the roles are going into packaging and uh you were talking to agents or? i was talking to agents managers and casting directors mm-hmm. that like 85 percent of the roles are going into packaging and by that you mean like if there's a hundred roles in a movie 85 of them are going to people that are clients of this agency this agency or one of the agencies so it's like if um you know if one of the showrunners is raised by cea and the other person is innovative then it's going down those branches and for me as a business person i'm like well of course it is if i'm innovative why would that prohibit an actor from getting a meeting with caa or innovative well, because it's not about getting a meeting with CAA or Innovative. To me, it's about getting the agent before CAA or Innovative, mm-hmm. right? It's like, how can I get with Gersh? How can I get with... Gersh isn't works, so you bad, know. you guys. What? They're <laughs> super great. Well, everybody loves Gersh. You know, but the agencies that and are very, like... They, yeah. They're, they're on, but the ones that are really good, but aren't the ones that are known right now mm-hmm. f- and being sued for intensive packaging, right? So... These agencies uh, with packaging, what's actually happening is a lot of agents are quitting being agents and they're going into being managers mm-hmm, sure. because they can't even, they can't make anything happen. Right. Yeah. Well, and you can also produce. It's like managing yeah, 100%. is so much managing more Managing is so much yeah. more loose, right? Yeah. Well, I think this is interesting. And I'd love to hear your opinion, Matt. I think like as an actor, one of the things, and, and I'm not an actor, so yes. feel free to correct me, but one of the things that you do when you first move to LA is... Mm. Sure, you're trying to book roles and you're doing Groundlings, Reese B, your short films, student films, whatever you're doing, but mm-hmm. you're really trying to court an agent or a manager or a rep of some sort, mm-hmm. right? You want to be in a showcase and you're mm-hmm. trying to get agents there or renew this mm-hmm. diversity CBS thing and mm-hmm. everyone's going to be there and you might get reps and it's like so much of your work is focused on getting representation because that's yes. kind of the gateway to auditions. As a filmmaker, yeah, we have agents and managers and lawyers and, <laughs> and reps, you're firing but, them right now but, yeah yeah but i feel like we're not um <laughs> Ew. We're, we're, <laughs> cut that on the hiring bay. <laughs> uh, we're not J- jay for real cut that part out <laughs> um but i feel like at, as filmmakers we're not really making stuff for agents and managers in the yeah. way that actors there's are not like, a hey, showcase my reel. mentality exactly well yeah. i Yes, and I would say to, to what I hear from writers and directors is they, uh, you know, they really wish there was because they would love again the opportunity to show their work on a consistent enough basis that they could then compete. Because part of what's so hard about what you guys do, like I love, I'm so glad that the next people you're having on are um, people who are actor producers, people mm-hmm. who've crossed over, because I. Pro like, actors. Pro, yeah, exactly. Pro actors. Um, I die when actors come up to me and they're like, I'm just going to make my own stuff. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, I want you to know, A, way harder, which they can't even fathom. Sure. B, way, way more expensive. Like sure. if you want to Wh- be in a movie, like show up to the audition, maybe spend a few grand this year on workshops, maybe spend an extra couple grand right. on really good headshots, maybe do a few showcases. And stay in acting class. We're talking like a few grand of investment. You want to produce a what short about, this and weekend? And steroids, right? And so many steroids. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things about this town. Yeah, he's on a lot of drugs. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, no Cast him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Action. Yeah. Felony? Those Lots of drugs? Don't Bring come him on. Out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I feel like. Um, I feel yeah. like. I, I, your you point. I, 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 lo- I love the point. 
<laughs> I, as a counterpoint, though, because I, I think it is important as a show called Just Shoot It. Mm-hmm. I, I totally look. I've sat through plenty and, of like. And by the we, way, Audrey we started her scenes. own podcast in her downtime <laughs> to, right, to yeah. help actors. Right. I may. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Um, right, but also to fill. Yes, to, to be right. produ- creative and productive sure, and sure. make right. things on your own without waiting for but people how many to hire people you. start podcasts that they're like i'm just gonna start a podcast and you're like Too no many. you don't understand like i mean i i did a sure. podcast panel and they're like oh this is a podcast and i'm like i want you guys to know it's not easy like it's yeah. not quick it's not random and what they want is something that's like i'll just like do this thing and then bam i'm whatever her name is who created that the British girl who created the Phoebe Waller, Keats. whatever her name is, yeah, Phoebe Waller. And Bridge. they all, the, everyone's Bridge. like, "I'll be her now." Or before then, it was like, "I'll be Mindy Kaling." Like mm-hmm. everyone just thinks they're gonna like. Well, don't you think podcasts are like the new Twitter? Like, like, <laughs> oh, Megan Amram made a Twitter. Yeah, like, yeah. shit. My dad yeah. says. I I guess. And now it's like, here's my voice. <laughs> right. to, to me, sorry. So In there's an hour and a half episode. There's two. <laughs> there's two things to think about. One, yes. I guess, a lot of what you're saying is just like, hey, surprise. Entertainment is hard. That's right. And uh, I guess I, I guess I haven't been around people who mm. are surprised by that idea in a while. Do you Correct. know what I mean? Yeah, you um, don't hang out with as many sure. actors as maybe that is true. I do. Yeah, yeah, right, definitely. Yes. Of uh-huh. just like the that just that a yeah. naivete. Naivete. I make sure. Exactly. I usually tell the ads to have them not look me in the eye. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. But, you know, I'll like right. write notes to them. Yeah, so. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'll have the AD Listen, convey yeah. what you're talking. They get the point. Yeah. They yeah, see right. my face. Yeah. Yes, like, exactly. Mm, he doesn't Again. Want to talk to me. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Let me know good, when they did it right. I'll good be back. This time. Good this time, please. Um <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> enough bits on being terrible to people. Uh <laughs> so there's that. Which I, I get your your point, right? Like mm-hmm. that is a, a thing that people need to like come to terms with, right? Mm-hmm. But then I think the flip side also is like maybe the thing you need to think about is like what your core competencies are besides acting. I right? love that. I love that. Because idea. I, I want people to feel empowered to go shoot their own thing for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. But maybe that means putting together a team. Mm-hmm. Maybe that means writing it yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about writing. Can we talk about writing? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to talk about writing. One one of the most fascinating guests we've had on recently was this guy, Sam Zwiebelman, that Mm -hmm. co-created Pen15 Mm -hmm. with Maya Erskine and Anna Anna Kunkel. I listened to said episode. Yeah. And um, what was interesting about that one is that... uh, he they it's not like he pitched the show to them or they pitched the show to him. Mm. He saw them. He's like, you two are fantastic, hilarious, hilarious actresses, right. actors. Mm-hmm. One of them is an actor. One's an actress. Right. Um, and <laughs> they were like, let's get together and let's come up with a show that sure. we can pitch and let's write it together. And uh, I, I just like loved that idea because you see that show. And you're like, oh, it's so genius. Like there's it, they must have been. This must be their childhood. It's about mm-hmm. them. It's about this. And you realize like. No, we just got together and we're like, let's make something. And mm-hmm. that's what came out of it. Mm-hmm. And now he has another show that's like the exact same thing. He found this actress that he loved and they got together and they're like, what's a show that's going to hit in a way? And yes. so I think like to what Matt's saying and to what you're saying is like writing and showing your voice, but maybe teaming up with someone whose core competency mm-hmm. is sure. the camera work but or see, the editing. Yeah. What I love about the concept of core competency, which, you know, you should trademark that show. Sure, that's sure. great. Okay. Yeah. I should yeah. trademark. Um, I've never heard that term yeah. before. <laughs> what Can, I love about trademark core, it real quick. <laughs> core competency is that it's acknowledging, which is, I want you to know, hard for actors. It takes, it takes a special breed to be an actor. And listen, if you're an actor listening, you know that I love you. You're my people. But we're a special breed. And it takes acknowledging sure. that maybe you're not good at everything. Sure. Yeah. And to be an actor takes a really special blend of belief that you're just the most incredible thing that anyone has ever met. Do you remember that episode of 30 Rock where <laughs> Tina Fey is like dating John Hamm yes. and he doesn't know that he can't speak French because yes. he's so good looking? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And I'm pretty sure he can speak French. I mean, clearly John Hamm was pretending he can't speak sure. French, right, for the show. But it's one of these things that it requires a healthy dose, dose of delusion mm-hmm. just to pursue it. Right, and I'm fine with that. Which is true that. for filmmaking, for too. For sure, for sure. But, but for sure. I, but I, I, there's I a difference. There's a difference, for the sure. filmmaker friends that I know, you guys operate out of a sense of logic because 
it was story the, structure. We are less attractive, and therefore people treat <laughs> right. us differently. Yeah. So you, it's in, true. In, in a true so, way. So you, you have genuinely. to be smarter about it. Yeah, yeah we sure. grew up having yeah. to prove ourselves in other yeah, yeah. ways. Listen, we were like, there's a reason we're funny. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Listen, I hear you. I understand. I get it. Whatever the root cause is, the effect is still the same. <laughs> and I can't tell you the number of actors, you know, they, they write scripts and what they're really writing, and I know, you know, younger writers do this too, but what they're really writing is like their tantrum, mm-hmm. right? They're writing mm-hmm. their tantrum. They're writing their like, therapy. they're writing yeah. their therapy, their yeah. vision board, sure. you know, yeah. stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's actually completely lacking in something called structure, mm-hmm. something called theme. So, you know, they, they don't, they don't even understand, but it's, they're not doing that uh, because they're terrible people. It's because we've not been taught. Sure. And the thing that like I also talk about on the podcast all the time is like story, 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 story. And I've come to feel that like in Los Angeles, like seven of them, seven people know story. Sure. Right? Yeah. And like none of them are actors. And it's not their fault. You know, we are raised uh, and and trained on Jordan Peele. Yeah, jo- yeah. So. Jordan Peele is the exception. Uh, but we're raised and trained on the best work that's ever been written. We're training on Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. We're training on O'Neill. We're you know we're training on Pulitzer Prize. It's taken me four years with the top actors in the 1940s. Right. Right. And all you really do have to do is show up, mm-hmm. be present, and receive. And then your job is to receive direction. And there's six weeks of rehearsal to fucking shape you. Yeah. Well, that sounds magical. Yeah, Hand me sounds... the best piece of writing that's ever been written. Give me six weeks to get it ready with the best actors. Let's see what happens, right? right? That's the training program. And nobody's like, hey, actually what you're going to get is fake sides that were written by three o'clock, at three o'clock in the morning by somebody who's on cocaine and super drunk sure. at the same time. And we're not even going to use these sides. They're dummy sides. Yeah. yeah. And the how, jokes don't make or sense. Or even more fun. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a commercial audition and you have no lines. You, you have no lines. To- yeah. uh, right. I mean, I loved, I listened to your Amanda Linker Doyle episode and I love that they were talking about that. You guys had a great conversation about the difference between commercials and theatrical. And it's like this fascinating thing to me where I'm like, help me help you. Please give me the spot ahead of time. Like, why you want me to drive all the way to Santa Monica, be in the wrong outfit, and then, like, I have to bring backup outfits in my car because you're, yeah. like, business casual. And I'm like, well, that's one thing if I'm the joke. It's another thing if I'm the antagonist. Like, sure. all these things. And I'm like, you're not breaking bad. Yeah, sure. Like, just it's just uh, give it to me. Yeah. Right? The, the problem is, is that they were rewritten the night before because I know. client didn't like listen I, yeah right a hundred percent hundred percent we Fine. feel the same way i know you do every listen everyone on the creative side feels the sure, same sure. way but my point is is that when it comes to story actors we have been taught in a way that really we fall very short mm-hmm. and that's why you have somebody like brian cranston who gets up and is like once i started telling the story and not worrying about being a good actor but just telling the story I couldn't stop working. And everyone's like, yeah, that. But everyone thinks they're telling the story. Mm-hmm. But because they don't know, like, that there's a protagonist here. Are you here to, are you here to help the protagonist? Mm-hmm. Like, what? Mo- if you were out of the script, what would be missing from the script? Right, right. Nobody yeah. asks those questions. My wife, she gets sides, like, for auditions all the time yeah. where we're like, what is this referring to? Like, is she saying that, is this a person's name or yes. is it the word pajamas you know like yeah you just like literally have no context yes. for this audition well like, this is we do it both ways another of my favorite thing of um the other podcast we'll all start creating which is um living with filmmakers sure. which <laughs> is the number of times i work sides with my husband and he's so disinterested and i'm like i just feel like you're disinterested like what's going on and he's like the writing's bad it's bad it makes no sure. sense they play the same beat three times it's bad it's not you it's the writing and I'm like, well, I still have to go in and do an amazing job with this <laughs> that terrible doesn't writing. Help me at that all. doesn't help me at all, and I need help. We have the exact opposite problem where my wife's like, stop trying to act it. Just <laughs> oh, that's say hilarious. Oh, no, no, no. My wife is like, oh, man, you need to put a little something on this. Because oh, really? I, I want to give like the, the, 
softest read possible. Uh, I just want to be like you want to give it to her neutral, yeah. and yes. then like, and like I see. oh damn it, um, I don't want to be. With I mean, anymore. that's that's hardly an exaggeration <laughs> of what it sounds like. I don't I don't want to pull focus at all. Do you know what I mean? Because well, and she's like, help me. The flip is too good behind. The right. I, there's so many times though that you'll you'll get a tape and you'll just hear somebody like acting their heart out on the, on other, the other side, side. and it's like, oh, well, you lo- literally you lost the role. Yeah, we are different. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's I think that's the how the podcast works. Im- I suppose. <laughs> yeah, thing exactly. is like if somebody if an, an actor sent me an audition and they had a gun in their hand and they're sneaking around their garage and yeah. they're shooting and they're it's lit nicely Dude. I'd be like this is fucking awesome yeah I would and Matt would save that and laugh at them later yeah <laughs> so that's, that's hilarious that's really because to me an actor yeah. that is aware yes that they are in a film is I want them to be different. in on the joke but like when they feel amateur yeah, well that's a different yeah, yeah. thing though yeah, I mean yeah. I talk to people about especially self tapes in specific like you know it's so funny. Like everyone's like, I hate self tapes, but then everyone's like, all we do is self tapes. I'm like, great. So that's sure. the way we that's work the in job. this town, yeah. Yeah. right? So, you know, I say like, if you're going in and out of frame because you don't know what you're doing, mm-hmm. then that's different from going in and out of frame to make a purposeful cinematic point, or because it's hilarious. It's that's what I mean. It's hilarious yeah. to like pop into frame in the beginning and like it's going to get you noticed and I would be like no I don't like this <laughs> and be like, yeah, but this awesome. is where it would be yeah. important to watch stuff that you've done already and go you know what I pop people into frames in my all stuff the all the time okay then I wouldn't but... book your job and then I would <laughs> no, just be like I don't know you just yeah, need to listen to our podcast yeah, yeah and no true. don't and then... pop into frame <laughs> in his audition yeah, yeah just right. like I just yeah. want I want to see your face mm-hmm. and do the lines yeah what I really love is that you're doing this episode about a, a series about talking to actors and I'd mm-hmm. love to hear from you guys what that is about. Well, we're still figuring it out. Okay, good. Um, yeah, like but I, I think and it's kind of like actors in, in terms of their relationship with either also being creators or yes, filmmakers. I understand. Um, uh-huh. And also their relationship with filmmakers. Right. Yeah, I, I think that um, the podcast can be really business oriented. Mm-hmm. And so in an attempt to just get into the craft in a more specific way, mm-hmm. but still keep the interview part. Mm-hmm. I think it was like, oh, let's just talk to some more actors and figure out what they like, what their questions are, what their misapprehensions are, yes. how we can help work with them. Yeah, and I then that. hopefully, you know, our listeners are better for it. Uh-huh. Yeah. They also maybe, I mean, this is not at all part of the thinking, <laughs> but just the fact that they're probably better at promoting yes, <laughs> sure. that they were on a podcast than uh, true. I have all a these fervent fan base. Yeah, there you go. Do you, I mean, there you go. They're a fervent group. I'll, let me tell you yeah. about actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are passionate. Yeah. Well, I want to go back to a question I asked sure. Matt uh, a little while ago because mm-hmm. I do think I think writers definitely really care about having agents and courting mm-hmm. agents and mm-hmm. that you write a writing sample and mm-hmm. you try to send it to agents and try to get it read and get assistance to yeah. see it or whatever. Yeah. But directors, do you, do you ever know directors that are making things to try to get an agent? Mm. I, I like don't. I've never really heard that, but you hear actors and and writers do it all the time. I, you know, I think that there's the thing of like doing the festival circuit and like yeah, but that everyone knows that that's a hoax net hoax now. Yeah, you know, it is and it isn't right. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I, th- I, don't I think, think from our experience, it is. Really. Yeah. yeah, not I, for filmmakers. I mm. would say that like submitting blindly to a place that you don't have any connection to right is pretty rough mm-hmm. yeah but like oh getting into a festival is a hoax but yeah but doing the festival circuit whether it's a sundance or well sure i mean there's Film things festival. like sundance and there's things like the los angeles comedy festival sure. Film festival which is which you know. a good one. So, so nice actually <laughs> so I really nice. Love festival. um <laughs> but yeah no no there, there are good festivals and there are bad festivals mm-hmm. and then there are your triple a yes big time festivals yes. but there's but, every festival you either sell your thing mm-hmm. <laughs> or you meet other yeah, cool you meet awesome people. Yeah, or cool. you see how bad everybody else's work is and you feel better about <laughs> being a, a that's a very creator, good way to look at which it which is important yeah because yeah, yeah. again it's you're like only looking booster. at the best stuff right? right exactly yeah that's important i think i think there's a thing also of like with the shorts and the festival circuit stuff mm. of like what we call Hollywood viral, Mm -hmm. right? Like I can, I know plenty of filmmakers that like didn't get huge views on their Vimeo staff pick or whatever, or even didn't even get a Vimeo staff pick. And they still got representation or some Mm -hmm. sort of heat Mm -hmm. because... Right, like Broad City is the famous example, right? right. They bring up... Yeah, yeah, but even like, I've got a a friend at Sundance. I I have a short that didn't 
get into Sundance mm-hmm. this last year. But he's you're the one. I'm yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but they still screen shorts every single Friday at lunch or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So like, yeah, they're like, we don't. I've only seen thirteen hundred shorts this <laughs> week. So true. <laughs> so well, true. not everyone who works at Sundance is a programmer. That's you know true. what I mean? Right. So there's a, still a lot of people who love film and mm-hmm. aren't watching movies for a living. Mm-hmm. But just as an example, right? And so same thing. Assistants have to like share things around and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So. So in that way, I think that there are ways that directors are hoping to get noticed. But I think also we're at a point in our careers where we know that agents just literally every single agent I've ever had came to me. And like every time I've ever solicited or like my manager has reached out to somebody different, it hasn't worked basically. And every filmmaker we've ever had or every listener we've ever had that's written us a question like, I just need to get a manager. I just need to get an agent. Mm -hmm. So we had my manager on Mm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was, I was like, how have I asked him if any of his clients were from cold submissions? And he said, zero, yeah. no, absolutely zero of them. Yeah. And I said, well, how do people find you? He's like, well, they're in my network. They somehow they get to me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what, how can our listeners get to you? And he's like, well, now that they listen to your podcast, they're in my network. So if mm-hmm. you send the guys that just shoot it an email, they can forward it to me mm-hmm. and um, maybe, and maybe I'll look at their stuff. Mm-hmm. And people are still forwarding Same us stuff. that stuff. And I don't know. I think maybe one person, it might have led to like an email exchange. Yeah. I mean, I would say most of our work, the vast majority of our work comes through a personal connection or network or someone seeing our reel. That's why. And and you can cut this. Right. Aimed at like the new filmmaker, the new actor, Mm -hmm. like uh, the misconceptions of what the industry is like. Yes. But I'd love to talk for a second about like more like the journey. Yeah. people yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. like the us like yes. the people that have been yeah, here sure 10 to 15 your co-stars years. your guest stars yeah cranking yeah. that stuff right. yeah, yeah. and a lot of it yeah. and i'm curious um because i from what i've heard on your podcast mm. and our podcast like like i guess something that i think is interesting about your podcast mm. um is that you like talk about things you booked in, mm-hmm. uh-huh. in, in yeah. your intro and we also talk about it but i'm like always kind of like hesitant to mm-hmm. like yeah, to there's plenty we, it. we leave out for sure. But but also, I'm, I just kind of feel like you can be in this business for 15 years and still be totally clueless. And so, like, I don't think of me as an expert. I think of me as, mm-hmm. like, having an opinion, you mm-hmm. know, and very much having like... Having some information, hopefully. Yeah, it, I guess the biggest thing that I feel strongly about is that everyone's, like, afraid of gatekeepers and negative... Like, there's a lot of negativity and, like, yes. oh, they don't mm-hmm. like me and... I think. Or even like Hollywood is so phony baloney. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that is something that we feel very confident trying to dispel because we've Me been too. on many sides of the equation and know that mm. every decision is made either by someone who, like a lot of people in power, don't realize that that you know actors don't like to sit on set all day when they only have a line at the beginning of the day and the end mm-hmm, of the day. You know, mm-hmm. like they they're just clueless about it. Or that, like, you know, you talk on your podcast, like in an audition, the director and the producer, they want you to be great just as much as you, you want do. to be great. Sure. Yes, right. Yeah. Like they're not, it's not them versus you. So I think that's something we dispel. But in terms of like the way in or what you should do, or like you mentioned at the very beginning of this podcast that like casting directors hate postcards, mm-hmm. but I know there's some, some casting them. directors. Sure. Yeah, or not yeah. love them, but they're helpful. Like Sharon Bialy has this book, right? And she talked about postcards and she's like, look, 99% of the time you send a postcard, I Nothing. might glance at it and it goes in the trash can. But if I happen to be casting a, a part that you might be like uniquely good for, I'll give it Going to my assistant. The, the, the magic that you were talking about yes. before. Right. Like there is a, you know, that slim chance. Yes. Right? And so in is way, it worth the postage to you basically? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in the way that Matt doesn't like when people pop into the frame and I do like when people pop into the sure. frame, mm-hmm. like there's, to me, it's like none of us are experts, and but but I still want to talk on this podcast. And this is actually a problem that Matt and I had in the beginning of this podcast, mm. where we're like, we started getting the impression that our listeners and guests didn't really realize that we were even directors, you know? <laughs> sure. Because we were so kind of, we just n- never talked about ourselves mm-hmm. because we felt weird about it. Or, or we also, you, you in an, attempt to like try and empathize with people and talk about the struggle and yes, like what it takes right. to be a working director people right. are like oh well these guys aren't working, working. at all uh-huh and yes or you just don't want to sound like you're bragging there's a anxiety that i think we have about mm. being 
gurus. I think we talked to Ted Sim a little bit about yeah, it. I like that's not a thing idea. that we want to be in the slightest bit. Do you know? Yeah. And so, and I, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I think it's rel- relevant to all people. Like we were yes. talking about before we started recording, that there are new filmmakers that they made all these shorts and they were nominated for a student Oscar. They won their their film f- schools or high schools like film competition, but mm. they come here and they're like so embarrassed to say that they're directors because they don't make their they're living, living as a director you know, or acting actors right, is yes. more so than, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, how do you find that in you to be like, hey, I'm fucking, I'm working. an actor. I think that I think for one I really talk about on the podcast don't for a second let the fact that there are many of us devalue at all what we do Mm -hmm. and I have such an integrity point of view about that that if you listen to any of my podcasts it's clear as day that I really believe in what all of us sitting at this table do I believe that people have really hard lives and uh, they have hard days and they need to come home to entertainment and they need some relief. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if that's through like a really dazzling Grey's Anatomy episode, if that's through The Handmaid's Tale, whoever finds uh, that relieving. The or, second democratic you know, debate. The second democratic debate. De- primary debate. Or whether that's through uh, Big Bang Theory. Like it doesn't matter to me. I find all of it really valuable and is part of the beauty to me of like the life experience, mm-hmm. like being alive. And I think I felt embarrassed maybe my first couple years here saying it because I was like waiting tables and I was like, I'm an actress. Mm-hmm. You Where'd know? you wait tables? Oh, so many places. I waited tables at a place called uh, the Grand Lux Cafe, which was like, Ooh, yeah. you remember Ooh, the, the that's Lux? That's a good one. I got real. On, at the bottom of the Beverly Center. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was it. Sure. Yeah, no, uh, that was real. You couldn't have said a better place. Oh, that that's was like, yeah. it's the place where everyone starts working. Yeah, it's yeah. like the Cheesecake Factory, that, yeah. right? <laughs> and so there were a couple years, but I think, um, I don't know. I th- I think I just got over it because my integrity and passion for the work is is really hard to deny i feel and you know especially la gets like a rap right of like like you said of you know it's mm-hmm. soul sucking and nobody cares and i couldn't argue with that more i mean i yeah, feel yeah. that the people who are in this town who are doing the work are the most passionate curious um Depressed. emotional <laughs> depressed but also sure, committed committed the right other, so yeah, high yeah. high but with great lows come great highs right sure. like it's it's people who have the strength to withstand those two mm-hmm. differences right and the gap in between and when i was able to really see it i could also see a difference in my approach to, to a lot of actors i've mm-hmm. never you know obviously i have a fucking podcast that i do to take up my time right sure. so like i've never given a halfway lazy apathetic meh, just whatever i want to do hang out attack on my work i've mm-hmm. only ever been in this all the way and why i have the podcast is, is i felt like i've been in this all the way for so long and and never mm-hmm. saw results and then i started understanding that there was like a business here to be figured out and strategies to be handled mm-hmm. that are like known business strategies Right. That I just Buy didn't low, know about. Sell high. Right. Yeah. But so, but I guess I, from an applicable point of view, do mm-hmm. you find that when you found that confidence to say like, I'm an actor, I booked mm. this thing and I booked this thing and I had three bookings this month and I'm doing a commercial and I'm doing this feature that when you started talking to people like that, mm. do you find that it turned them off or that it made them more likely to want to hire you or look at your work and be interested in who you are? Because I know it, as a filmmaker, like if you're at a party and you just meet some random person. You're yeah. talking. You're waiting in line for to do a keg stand. Yes, right. All you ever do. Weekday sure. night. Normal for me. dad behavior. Yeah. 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 Uh, when you're like, yeah, I kind of direct a little. I'm trying to direct, you know, but I mostly edit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus saying like, I'm a director. You know, yes. uh, I just well, had a shoot and I have a shoot last week. That they're you, more likely to go check out your website or your work with the with the second story. Here's the thing: if you're in that environment, you're like waiting for the keg stand. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. You say, oh, I'm a director. The follow-up question inevitably, same with an actor. Yes. It's like, what have you done? What have you done? And if you have an answer that satisfies that, then I think it's the same result without feeling quite so anxious about like name dropping necessarily right well you know? i would be like or, or have you heard of audrey Moore? <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> i i have her, her on my podcast <laughs> audrey Hills. i mean Godless. legit though i want you guys to prepare yourself the moment this goes live anywhere you go where there's an actor they'll be like oh my god you want audrey helps actors like they will literally attack you i've been given the feedback that that's true okay so what i was going to say about that is this is actually part of the mission of the podcast honestly is to get rid of this embarrassment and shame about where you are versus where you think you should be. And having an understanding of like, what is a realistic expectation? Mm -hmm. Because I now sitting on this side of my career, look at people on whatever side of career they've had, and I find this to be true, and I'm sure you do on the directing side too, nothing but empathy and understanding actually. Like I just look at them and I'm like, oh yeah, no, I know where you are, that's hard. You know, yeah. or like, oh yeah, no, I know where you are. That's ex- that's exciting. I hope yeah. something comes of that. Uh, check, please. Check, check. I'll take the check, please. <laughs> right, but there, but we've both also seen people that are like, hey, check out my web series. Have mm-hmm. me on your, you know, like sure. like like, like it, directors is, and, actors, and actors, and, like actors. Like you should cast me, and you see what they've done so far, yes. and you're like, you're okay. not ready, right? Like you see, that's a really hard thing because. The you're not ready thing is something that, again, I'm really trying to open actors' eyes to because there's so much delusion about an entitlement about what you're really qualified for. And, you know, I'll say to them, like, well, you know, how many auditions did you have last year? And they're like, 20. And I'm like, well, what happened? They're like, I didn't book any of them. And they're like, okay, well, those aren't great statistics. Like there's a problem to be solved here. Mm -hmm. And this thing that you just said of, well, you're not ready is going to be really triggering to a lot of actors because they're all scared deeply that they're not ready. And also they're all being, not all of them must, many of them are being lied to by their acting teachers. They're being lied to um, by people who maybe don't even know better. Mm -hmm. Right. And who are trying to be encouraged, who are trying to be encouraging sure. or, or don't even know better and just think like you're great. Mm-hmm. Right. And don't understand that there's a difference between being really great in your scene study class. And then that translating into you being outstanding in an audition that will then book you a job. Right. Mm-hmm. And the panic and underlining fear that you're not ready and nobody's telling you is very real for actors. Mm-hmm. I'm and sure. so I don't even though. It could be true, right? Like to me, especially on a commercial, when you have an actor that's never been on set before, it takes longer than an actor that has been on set before. But see, that's really hard for actors to swallow because they feel like so insecure about that truth Mm -hmm. because they're in so much shame and frustration about the fact that they're not ready and they're so angry that nobody's being honest with them. And I, I don't know why people aren't being honest with them. I mean, Jenna Fisher, uh, you know, if you read her book mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she talks about, I, I wonder if it's because everyone's really nervous about being that director that told her, like, if she's not willing to get naked in this town, she'll never work. Like, everyone's really nervous that you say that to the actress that then gets famous and writes a book about what a jerk sure, you are, right? right. But at the, I feel that actors are starving for somebody to be like, that wasn't good enough. You're not ready and it's not because you're bad. It's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because you actually haven't put your hours into that skill. Mm-hmm, and right. go and put your hours into that skill and you'll be ready. My, yeah. I I would never say you're not ready, but I would say like, hey, can you send me like three things you've done before for me to watch? You know, like, right. which ba- but I'm, you might I'm trying even... to say like, hey, if you've never done anything before that you can send, that you feel. But you see, I find me. with actors, it's delusion. Again, they'll go like, oh, but he asked for more of my material. Oh, that's what, a doubt. Right. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. they'll tell me. is like, and then this director, and he asked for more material. They'll yeah. never hear, like, I didn't have anything to send him. And then I'm like the one who's like, great, so did you send him anything? And they're like, well, I had done this short thing with my sure. friend, like, in our apartment. And uh, I think it's, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm there's like, some stuff oh, that I'm proud of. No. Yeah, or, I mean, Orin and I, we have, I'm trying to think of what episode it is. Mm. But we had a long conversation about, auditions and Mm. what the 
most sympathetic uh, action can be Maybe. because I am like, a, hey, thanks so much. Good, you know, like one take, we're mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. Whereas Oren likes to give them the shot of like, I like get nervous it. that the actor like, outside, they're like, they they heard that they had three takes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, three, yeah, sure, right? sure, sure. Yeah. And again, it's because we're both married to actors. So we're just trying right. to figure out like what's the most empathic so way to to handle this. Handle this. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I can't answer that question. I wish I could. But I will say that what I really encourage actors to do is to gather more data. Mm-hmm. Because if they have an audition with you, and you know it goes really well but they don't book anything that to me is like not enough data if they have 20 auditions that they think is going really well but then they don't even get a pin or an Mm -hmm. avail or anything then that to me is well there's something to be looked at and it might not even be talent related for commercials it's often like cut your hair that's all it is right well the commercials it's so so random so random i I don't i don't know that there's data to really be mined honestly because (laughs) and i don't mean to undermine anything yeah no i understand but i've said explicitly this is the only actor worth casting yes and they've and, gone and they've else. gone with someone else Listen. many times they uh, people who, who i've disliked have gotten cast right and like you know sometimes people are like i don't like the way that person looks and it's because their but ex-wife looks like that person what's really important about commercials and you're with actors so you understand this what's very different about commercials that's good for feedback is you do get callback numbers and you do get avail numbers and they put like eight actors on avail now so sure. those are now really great data numbers to know that you're working properly I, yeah, I, I'm trying to put yes, people on avail, but there's still I, I I try to put as few people on avail as possible. Yeah, and I only put them because Kara is like even she just auditioned for Jordan yeah. Brady. He texted me, he's like, oh, I just saw your lovely wife. Oh, yeah, that's nice. And then um, he's like, she's lovely and hilarious. And then she's like, oh, he could have at least put me on avail. Avail. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess he that's could have true. just like literally as like because to her agent, right. that looks sure, that looks good. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that's the thing. But to me, it still is more feedback and theatrically used to have callbacks and sure. we don't have that anymore and that used to let your reps know that like you were working properly which mm-hmm. as you know as directors is just really what you can do like you can work really properly do your best work and at the end of the day what works for the story based on which actor they grabbed for what offer for then some casting mm-hmm. of some essence sort of mishmash it together and we'll see what the right, fuck we got, right. right? I get really nervous about trying to dig too deeply in things that from experience on the other side are just so random and so hard to really parse data from that it, it makes me nervous. Nervous. Yeah, exactly. I understand. Because I know how emotional it is. Totally. You know I mean? Yeah. Because um, we talked about what you, what, what actors I think find helpful for uh, directors. Uh, what is it that you would like to say to a fervent group of actors of all levels that you can communicate to them. Um, no hard feel, no pressure. Don't sure, email no. us your headshots. Yeah, no, that's for sure true. <laughs> yeah, don't no. don't don't email me. Yeah, sure. I yeah. will actually like. You we can, can email really... me. You can email me if you want, um, like a download link. That's yes. actually okay. okay. <laughs> Here's what I say about the emailing, and we should actually really do this because it's a thing is just listen to me, you guys. If you're to, to the Audrey Helps Actors listeners, I say this every time I have somebody on that I feel like, oh, just be careful, is that it's actually not great. That if you do that, that it what it does is it floods their emails and then that's more time that they have to spend and more to delete on. And I just ask you to really respect their time. And the better way to do it is, you know, Go to their live show. Listen to you their podcast. Come say hi. Come sure. say hi. All of that sort of stuff. But if you're like, you know, cast me in your thing. Like, I just am always talking to you guys about really trusting in a natural evolution of relationship over enforcing yourself into somebody's space. Yeah. without a, and, and with the caveat, if we know each other, if we got to know each other, yeah, we worked sure. together a bunch, if right. we were friends. And like, I heard you real, on Audrey Helms Actors. Sure, sure. Right. Yeah, that stuff is fine. Um, but like, otherwise... You know. yeah, yeah, no. But honestly, no, if someone emailed me and said like, hey, I listen to your podcast and I like this thing and thanks for doing it, mm-hmm. that would be totally normal. But if someone, I mean, the emails that I've gotten a lot and I'm sure it's just people sure. looking up on IMDb Pro, yes. people like a thousand yeah. directors email addresses yeah. is like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in LA and I'm work, looking for work and I, here's my resume and here's my headshot. 
I've never once like ever called in. I love that. Or, or I'll get the email of like, I know I'm definitely right for this role. <laughs> no, right. Nothing turns me. you off more, right? Nothing. Yeah. Literally like you're Nothing blacklisted. You yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's this interesting thing. Like I will I, remember you, but not the way you want me to. No. Yes. I will yeah. not remember you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's this interesting thing that I've experienced of like the show that you are dying to get on. You're just never going to be on. You're just not going to because you're too passionate about it and it scares everybody instead. Anything else you want to say to them? Um, I would, you know, I was making the joke before. I think that it's hard for actors, especially when they're first getting smaller roles. Uh huh. I'm probably not going to talk to you too much. And that's yes. kind of a good thing. Yeah. Right. Um, which is a hard thing to hear for sure. Mm-hmm. But, um, but we've got a lot of stuff on our plates. And yes. so... I really actively try to remind myself of where actors are emotionally and I try my best to go out and like reach out to them, but sometimes it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes they're going to miss it. Yes. And so when I say moving on, that really does mean everyone did a great job and like now we get to go do the next thing. Yes. And so it is the highest compliment I pay everybody Mm -hmm. across all departments Mm -hmm. um, because I'll keep shooting until we get it right. Yes. And so I'm sorry if I I don't make the time sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, or if I get pulled away or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I love that. Um, I'll add two things about auditioning. One, and you probably have covered these ad nauseum on your podcast. I love it. It's good to hear for them to hear it from not me, right? Right. Yeah. Um, So number one is like if I'm eating and your audition has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. I've seen 40 actors that day. Yeah, like. I, no one's ever said anything to me, but I've Mm-mm. my actor friends have been like, "Ugh, he's like eating a sandwich and answering emails during my audition." Like, first of all, if they're not paying attention to your audition, they're probably not the decision maker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's so important because you'll see six so, assholes on their phones or on their laptops yeah. even. Mm. So don't let that. Don't worry I know about it's it. impossible. Don't worry about it. Easier yeah. said than done, but try to not let that throw you. Um, yes, because. They wouldn't waste their time. If, and it also bothers us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we want them to watch as well. To me, because, I've told producers like, hey, if you want to talk, like they'll whisper during an audition. I'll be like, that, that's absolutely not acceptable during mm-hmm. an audition. If you want to talk, if you want to be on your phone, if you want to email, if you want to text, mm-hmm. I prefer you don't, but that's okay. But like there's no whispering, you mm-hmm. know, during an audition mm-hmm. or even like walking in or out of the room. Um, right. But but eating is just something we have to do during the day. And the reason we're eating in the room is because we want we've spent too much time with the actors, mm-hmm. you know? Right, right. Um, and then that... Yeah, well, I'd rather audition a couple more people and eat a sandwich in front of you than, like, send people home. Right, you know? yes. But I think when you're talking about that, you're talking about commercials. Sure. Like, you, there aren't a lot of producer sessions even happening anymore where it's, like, you and the producer theatrically. Sure. And then you're just, like, so hungry, I'd eat the sandwich. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's Correct? true. You know, I, when I've done theatrical or, like, even more branded series stuff, I mm-hmm. mean... It, for my per- I always like to see as many actors as I could possibly see. So yes. I, uh-huh. and I'm always yeah, hungry. Yeah, no, that's true. No, that, yeah. <laughs> that, um, yeah. Was there a second thing? Something yeah, my second thing is, yeah. and again, this might be just a me thing, but yeah. like that your order, the order you're auditioning in yes. makes a huge difference to whether, uh, mm, tell to me, about me that. like whether I'm going to be interested in what you're doing. If you're the first person of the day, it's toast. First of all, it's not toast, but I'm probably going to redirect you a lot. I'm mm-hmm. going to try things out. And I always try to tell actors, like, just so you know, you're a first person for this role. So yes. we haven't, we're just kind of figuring out. We're going to mm-hmm. try different things. Just so you know, actors know that. And then casting directors have had a lot of problems because if you know you're first, you'll show up late. Mm-hmm. And then it starts the whole session late. I've, I've cast people, the first person. That's it can. Started. You I've can. Yeah. It's like setting the precedent. It yeah. happens. But we know that, like, we're all working it out. Right. Sure. But, but right. I don't think that's especially it's actually to me one of the best auditions because I get to see if you're taking direction. I get to see if you're adding I see. to the blocking. Mm-hmm. You or get doing to things. learn to like them. Yeah. I you see. know, mm-hmm. but I prefer you don't go too off script if you're the uh, first person because I, I want to see if my it script works. even works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're the last person of the day, mm. it's like I've seen this a hundred times. So like that's when the sentimentality can really bug me. Yes. You know, yeah. because I've seen 40 different actors. And if you think like, like, oh, it'd be really funny if I took a bite in the middle of this or, yeah. you know, or did, like it, odds are that I've, we've already seen it. So like, don't be overly proud about like yes, these little saying. improv moments. Uh-huh. A button is fine, but 
it, I, it's not going to get you the job or not get you the job. I'm okay with a button sometimes. Yeah. 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 Um, like late in the day. But like yeah, but late in the day. to spice the, it yeah. up. I understand. And I feel like actors hear that all the yeah. time. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. My, I know, especially as a commercial actor, like I, I, I do um, have my, luckily I, I have my end in both pots. I'm, I stride both lanes. I don't know what the metaphor is, but I do work in both fields. Uh, it's, it's thumbs and crossover. Pies. Thought, yeah, <laughs> sure. pies. Um, I do do crossover a lot. And I know that like my job commercially is really because it, none of this is going to make it into the commercial. It's just so that everyone there feels like Audrey's great. Right. She's entertaining. Sure. She's great. She'll come up with some stuff maybe if we need her to. Right. You know. And I also yeah. like to see that she knows how to read the room. Like yes. some rooms are like, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? How's the weather? How's the traffic? Other rooms are like, okay, can you get, stand on your mark and yes. slate? Yeah. And by the way, I'm almost never paying attention during the slate because that's mm. the only time I can like be sending emails and yes, things. And right. it's like uh-huh. not important at all how, yes. to, how you slate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of like weird pressure on actors to like slate the right way or whatever yeah, that's a different thing yeah, though yeah that's that's, that's like again same. weird teachers teaching yeah, weird yeah, stuff right. that yeah. doesn't exist it doesn't, anymore yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh-huh. also it's so strange hand don't don't, don't shake oh, yeah. if you try to shake still my shaking hand, your hand is that a thing uh, yeah. to me it's the yeah. oh, number God, one no. giveaway that you haven't Listen. auditioned a lot okay let me talk to my we do all, we, and very unfortunately and very sadly and much to uh, against our will we do work with a lot of non-union mm-hmm. actors mm-hmm. and a lot of them will try will come yeah. shake your hand so a lot of them are what we call not non-union but we call them pre-members because <laughs> they will be members someday sure, it's right. only a matter of time and to okay so listen about the handshakes if no one's told you yet don't do it it's it, he's absolutely right it's the biggest flag that you're green that sure. you want to shake anyone's hand so do yourself a solid look like a pro and never ever 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 shake anyone's hand you like unless they go, unless they come if they to reach you. out yeah. yeah, if they reach out, don't be like, Ugh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, oh, I'm sick. <laughs> and then I have one last question. Um, when it comes to directing and casting, this is, I think, a big thing that actors really are just uh, in a kerfuffle about as far as like relationships and what relationships you focus on and what you make. Is there's a lot of, I'd say, uh, points of view about like go share your own stuff, go work with other actors, go work with directors, go, you know, build those relationships versus what, you know, which I would call like side door relationships versus Mm -hmm. like go meet with casting directors, go make impressions with casting directors, build those Mm -hmm. relationships up and put your focus on that. Now for you, your wife got started so early in the business that it's a different game for her. But, you know, how much of what, I'd love to to give like a percentage rough estimate. How much of what you cast, the actors that you have actually cast, have been people that you never knew, that you never saw, who came into the room and blamma blew you away? And how much of them is mm-hmm. you've known them before, either that you've seen them in another audition and they did a great job, you know them personally, you've worked with them before, something like that. For me, non-union jobs, 95%. I have no clue who they are. Who they are, great. SAG jobs, probably more like 50%. You know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's probably around correct for me. Mm. But I will say, if Chrissy and Amanda are like, oh, you're going to love this one? Yes. I will pay 10 times more attention. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that. That that to what degree are you... um, when a casting director mm-hmm. like them comes to you and says uh, they're passionate about somebody, uh, to what degree does that ever have an influence over your uh, casting decisions? I mean, a huge, that like, does. like, it, like well, the, it, it the will, most valuable, I would say. And that's, that's partially be, it'll, because it'll make a difference between a callback and no callback for sure. Will it make a, a difference between a booking and no booking? I've had plenty of, I don't work with a ton of casting directors, but mm-hmm. the, so the ones that I, like I love, mm-hmm. you know, and so I take their opinions very seriously. So it's interesting well, for me you, only as a tiebreaker. Like a tie if it's breaker, between yes. two people and they're like, "Great, well, we worked with this person. They everyone we get great love feedback that. on them." Yes, but if it's like, "Here's our one, two, and three, and they're like, "Oh, this three person, he just booked this thing, and he's gonna blow up, and he just, yeah, he's the Geico guy." You're like, "Nah." I'm like, I'll bring That's that much. up. Maybe I'll think about. It. I'll look at their other work, yeah. but 
I, I don't think it would. But see, I, you said you don't work with casting directors that often, and that to no, me, or, no, 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 that no. many different casting. That many. Different. Oh, that many different. I'm, I'm a loyal person. I understand. I love that. Yeah. No okay, loyalty. Good. So, um, do you have a problem of them bringing all the same talent in all the time? No, but I will sometimes say, "Hey, bring in some ringers." Yes. Like, and we're also conflating like scripted versus commercials, right? Like in a commercial situation, like. You know, sometimes people think they know what they want, and then you know, Mm -hmm. we brought in entirely wrong people, and I'll be like, "Hey, like, you know, so and so, you need to like and bring game up, yeah, like bring some people in, like, like this is going to be a problem." And every project is different in terms Mm -hmm. of how close we are to the final say. Sure, Um, sure, right, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you don't get the final say. Yeah. How Usually, I mean, yeah. um, but but theatrically you do, or theatrically it's up to producers sometimes too. Theatrically. I don't know. I did. It, I mean, you know, we did. We've both done shows for this I know. company, New Form, that does right. like digital shows, and yes. they really care about Instagram followers. Yes, that's right. And, and so to them, it's like this person was amazing. This person less amazing, but has a huge following and will do so much for Fame. publicity. Fame, Fame. Fame. is important. It is. It's right? marketing. Yeah. Yeah. It is important. Yeah. So, yeah. and like, I would never, will never choose the marketing a- angle for me personally. Yes. Um, but and, but and they the, will. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think we also, as I mean, you were saying, like, uh, can you think of any director that's only a director? Mm -hmm. We're all also producing, right? So, yeah, that's right. I need people to see my show, Mm -hmm. and so I have to make that calculus of like, well, yeah, I'll use it to sell an actor many times. I'm like, and look at Audrey; she has a podcast. Yes, that's right. But I'm I'm saying, like, even if I'm like the decision maker, if they're like, and low, pick whoever you like love best mm-hmm. like i still have to know like i need people if a, people don't see this thing yes. it's gonna be a real problem because i'm right. gonna spend a year of my life like busting my ass on it can i just like for my listeners really make a point about that because i really want them to understand that that like by the time you get to casting a year is fast like it's usually like a four to eight year process right so like if a yeah, year has a happened right for a feature so like if you've gotten to it in a year that's quick and it's your career too and you need it to go and you need it to get seen. So it's not being cast with that other actor, you know, who has more credits and has this maybe better agency, just like random willy nilly just to like spite mm-hmm. you. It's right. like. It's not like, ah, oh, we want the popular kids no, versus the underdogs. Yeah, yeah. I love the way you put that. Yeah. It's not that we want the popular kids versus underdogs. It's like, I need my project as part of my career to go. Without and yeah. I and this may give it a better shot in doing so. Yeah, I'll say one thing I do, even though it's not super easy or fun, is if mm. I ever call in an actor for mm. an audition, mm-hmm. um, I will, and they don't get it, which is most of the time. Yes. then I'll email them and be like, "Hey, thanks for coming in. Yes, this is you're awesome. This is why you didn't, you get, didn't it. get it." Well, I love that. I mean, I can take a few seconds to talk to your listeners about what Please. actors really yeah. love. Um, first of all, if you have an actor who's worked a small role at the end of the day, please give them a hug and tell them how great they were. I don't, I always tell this to Jesse all the time, like, I don't care if they weren't great. You don't know why they weren't great today. Maybe they're great all the time. Maybe like you said, they're green, whatever happened. But we're, we're vulnerable people at the end of the day. <laughs> and we, and, and Both directors, yes. And, 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 and actually, yeah. And, and. And directors, you guys are so in your heads sure. about what's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I also think like actors don't understand that you guys are like bears where you're more scared of us than we are of you. And so like the communication can often be very weird. Mm-hmm. I, right? I always joke and it's insen- insensitive, but the nicest thing I say to an actor is moving on. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> right. And yeah. I literally used to go to shoots where I was paid great money to act. and And when they would keep moving on, I would think like, oh God, they're just so, uh, I'm they're not just make so, the final oh, yeah, well, I just think like, they just don't even care about me. Yeah, yeah. And then reverse, if they spent a lot of time, I would be like, God, they're just not getting it. Like it doesn't matter which way <laughs> sure. it goes, right? Yeah. So that I think is very important uh, for for actors. Um, you know, this email, I love that. I think that's beautiful. I don't think that's realistic. I, yeah, I only you know? do it if I'm like, hey, you really I saw feel this. That way. I worked with this actress. She's great. Let's bring her in. Yes. She's a little old for the role, but let's just see what let's she does. Let's see what she does, right. And then she doesn't get it because she's a little old for the role. Right. I'll email and I'll be like, hey. Just FYI. I just thought you were really amazing. Have you yeah. tried to be younger? 
Yeah, yeah. right, right. I mean, those are wonderful. And I had a, a an acting teacher used to tell me I should make a folder of those. I used to just get mm-hmm. lots of them, you know, rejection letters, sure. right? rejection yeah, yeah. emails. But I do think that if you're having a communication with an actor that they feel, um, I, it's so interesting. I think unless you're an actor, you can't really know it. It's this hyper awareness, hypersensitivity that comes about. And to whatever degree you can be gracious yet it's a hard thing. Gracious yet direct. Mm-hmm. I think they really, we really love. Um, I know that like there's a lot of directors out there who are like, oh, I'm going to be an asshole and get something out of you. Sure. Yeah. But right. I I find um, we're just like children. You know, we like we like clear. Mm-hmm. Well, clear can I ask you a question, like a specific yeah. question? So I have mm-hmm. a friend, friend of a friend that was like came to audition for something, and mm. in his audition he. He was obviously nervous and mm. he like just moved, like kind of clapped his hands a lot. Yes. In a way that just felt like he was not ready. That's what I mean yes. by not ready, right? I see what you're saying. Like yes. this is like your seventh audition and I yes. want it to be your 70th audition. Right? Yes. Um, and he emailed me and he asked for feedback. Like, hey, thanks so much for I having me. I would give direct like, feedback. You would say you yeah. clapped your hands too much and it I seemed would. awkward. I would exactly do that. I would exactly do that because the people who are giving us feedback are mostly for being a working actor was talk to the stuff like that because a lot of people teaching us are not currently working they're not and i mean currently working like i have i know acting teachers who've like stopped working in the last you've stopped you know pursuing acting in the last like year or two who are already giving out of date feedback mm-hmm. and i will hear their out of date feedback and i'm like that's that's not right anymore right. what like, about just mail that vhs yeah, let's exactly. adjust it though because i think there's something very prescriptive about like hey man you were clapping that's weird stuff yes something that would be a lot harder to take let's yes. talk about that right i love like, that I assume you still would be like, oh, listen, like, you know, you, like it felt you, like you were saying the line, like reading yeah. the script yes. as opposed to like, because I yeah, think yeah, actually yeah. that actors, when, when they're given a note that they know is true, it's not offensive. They might be ashamed that they're not ready yet mm-hmm. because it's a, it's a shock. Sure. I guess we don't want to embarrass them. Right. But I find when communications to any artist come out, come from a real desire to help you. Not a desire to be smarter than you, not a desire to smash you down, not a desire to, of ego, but really like, hey, I just want you to know, I don't think you're ready quite yet. I think you could probably use some hours in like an on-camera audition class. I don't really know of one, but I think maybe you were a little moving a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. And the other actors just had a sense of ease that in the callback you didn't bring. I can tell you as an actor, I would have been over the moon because for one, it's real honesty back from somebody who's in the buyer position and not in the seller position. And that's a very specific difference. And two, somebody cared enough about me to give me honest, helpful direction Mm -hmm. in the growth of my craft. And I think we're all starving for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting because even just hearing you say that, mm-hmm. I totally see and acknowledge how valuable that could be and how scary it feels to mm. be the person to deliver that to someone. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I do because I do talk to actors all the time. And, you know, a lot of my episodes are what I call leveling up episodes. So they're talking to actors who want to get to the next level. And I literally will watch all of their material and I go through all their stuff and I'll say like, you don't know how to audition yet. Mm-hmm. But it's always followed by, have you spent any hours learning how to audition? And they'll always say, I mean, some. And I'm like, some sure, meaning sure. like you've auditioned a few times right. or some meaning like right. compared to your scene study hours, what are we talking? And they're like, oh yeah, probably like five hours. I'm like, great. You think five hours of learning how to sure. audition is... Makes you a professional auditioner. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? And... And, and because my intention is so like 
because I'm fighting for them. And I feel so many people are just out to take your money. And I'm like fighting for you to learn and to get the career that I believe you really deserve, but you can't get because you've spent five hours learning how to audition. And right. nobody will say to you, I think you need to learn how to audition. Yeah. Well, something that I think you say on your podcast, which I found fascinating, and I think equally applies to filmmakers and writers and directors and mm. actors, is that like Olympics comparison. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which is like, if you want to be an ice skater in the Olympics, I mean, you brought up the NBA earlier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like you think of it? being an actor or a director mm-hmm. as that, or a writer as that. Mm-hmm. Like, are you eating, breathing, waking up at 5 a.m. and going mm-hmm. to the ice skating rink to write your pilot? Yes. Um, and I even want to especially say that about the difference between the professional pursuit and and what I think could be a, a hobby, passionate pursuit. Mm-hmm. And I'm devastated that so many people feel bad about the idea of any of it being a passionate hobby pursuit because a lot of people are very, like, they're filled in their life and spend thousands of dollars on incredible hobbies sure. that they are really passionate about. I think as artists, we forget about hobbies. Yeah. When I when I went full No, time, I know that that's true because I'm married to one and no yeah, hobbies. Yeah. Let me recommend pinball. <laughs> yes. Pinball. Or that's uh, my main hobby. cigar aficionado. <laughs> yes, thing. whatever it is. <laughs> Just something you can zone out to. Geode. Yeah. Uh, Hunting. That's that's actually exactly what I'm talking about because like who's going to make a living out of geodes? Like only a few sure. people, but most right. people like it's a you great... You have to live in a tourist pe- right. trap town. Right. Yeah, yeah. But for most people, it's like a passionate, exciting hobby that like brings them to life. And I say to them, whether you're a director, whether you're an actor, whether you're a writer, like, okay, do you think you're operating at Olympic level? Honestly. And also when you sign up to be the Olympics, everyone... When, if you're going to tell your family, like, I'm going to be an Olympic skater, that's not just a commitment on your end. That's a commitment to all of them as well. It's a financial commitment. Mm-hmm. They're not mad that you're not coming home for Christmas because you're trying to qualify for the Olympics. Right. And they're in just your like corner you for book that. a great role. Right. They're not mad that you're not coming Suddenly, home for right. but, Hanukkah or Christmas. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're forgiving suddenly. But I feel... Like if most people understood that what you're actually trying to do is qualify for the Olympics and they can make an educated choice about whether or not they want this to be a professional pursuit or they just really like ice skating. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, on that note. (laughs) Just shoot it and ice skate it out. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, cool. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, you guys. Should we endorse some things? Uh, Unpaid endorsements. I'll I'll lead with Midsummer. Oh yeah, you loved that. Boy, I really loved it. Um, is it a horror film? So genre e soft horror. It is. There's plenty of gore. Yes. However, I would say the actual scariest, quote unquote, scariest yeah. stuff happens relatively quickly. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it lacks suspense. Mm. You know, you figure everything out very, very quickly. You I figure see. it out from the trailer. So is it just kind of eerie and concerning? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like um, okay. it's like a little bit of a fever dream. Oh, um, interesting. And the more I think about it, the more I like it. It's uh-huh. shot incredibly well. The visual effects are really great. The performances are all incredible, actually. Yes. And then I'll, since I already talked about how I was going to endorse it, I'll also double down. The Farewell is also really great. These Farewell. are movies that this episode is like... It's gonna. They're not gonna be yeah. in theaters anymore. They were but, like, right? We'll rent it. But rent them. Yeah, yeah they're exactly. probably on their way. So good. Uh, the farewell is uh, really wonderful as well. Movies, you guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, directors. You guys love your movies. Yeah. It's easy to forget though. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of great TV shows out there as well. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Audrey, what you got? Um, my new favorite TV show, which we're having a really great time watching is The Boys on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Have you tried it yet? I haven't. I remember the comic and being like... Oh, it was a comic. Of course oh, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Did you know it was a comic? No. Fascinating. Interesting. It's Seth Rogen EP, right? Is it uh, yeah. Producer. Right. Um, and it's about like, it's like a superhero comedy. 
Yeah, it's basically a superhero dark comedy. Like, I would oh, say. we can do whatever we want. We're superheroes. No, you know, I think what's so great about it, I mean, it just goes into whether or not you can actually digest things that are actually really clearly about Hollywood or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like we have to stop watching. Uh, like we can't, we couldn't watch Party Down after one season. Oh, it man. It's too devastating. Season two, you got to get into no, it. No, we can't do it. But uh, The Boys does a really good job at, in sort of a sci-fi fantasy fiction way, taking my world of mm-hmm. our world of Hollywood and all of the mess and lies of it all mm-hmm. and f- turning it into a comic book TV show so that all of that reality is slightly more digestible. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's very fun. I haven't heard that read before. That sounds oh, good. Oh, it's very more clearly. Appealing. Oh, interesting. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks thank for you. having Audrey. me over. Yeah, this was great. So, it was a pleasure. Um, obviously, we can find the podcast. Audrey helps actors That's everywhere. Right. But is there? Do you have a personal website as well? Uh, I'm just on. I, I'm the good old IMDb Audrey Moore, and then Audrey scores more on Instagram, and Audrey helps actors on Instagram. We do that Gram Life, and for my listeners, they can find you guys at Just Shoot It Podcast on uh, Instagram. Yeah, uh, it's Shoot uh, It Pod. Just Shoot It Pod shoot across. It pod. We're not going to waste. Social. We don't want people to think cast. it's like casting. And nobody cares about it's casting. casting podcast. Yeah. Right. Um, and the website, which will have links to everything that we talked about and all that stuff. That's fantastic. Um, at justshootitpod.com. Yeah. That's great. And I'm at uh, O. Kaplan on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I'm at Mr. Matt Enlo across everything. Uh, I love your director's reel. It's very funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's you're killer welcome. reel. It's very if you want to be in reel. my reel, I'm ready. $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your To headshot. finance it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, cool. Well, so, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, This episode is produced by Madeline Rosewatt. It's edited by Jay McAuliffe, and our webmaster is Ewan Williams. The music you're hearing right now is from the Free Music Archive and the artist Jazar.